Hey everyone, it's Josh from WA Production, and today I'm excited to share with you our new plugin called Presser. We built this plugin in collaboration with renowned producer and YouTube star Aiden Kenway, known for his music production tutorials and videos on how to produce beats like Lil Uzi Vert, Drake, and Travis Scott. The Presser plugin is a versatile compressor that allows users to shape the dynamic range of their audio signals and add character and punch to their music. It features signature processing chains from Aiden Kenway himself and his productions, as well as innovative controls, along with the basic compression parameters that you would expect. With Presser, users can fine-tune the plugin's behavior to suit their needs and achieve the desired creative effect. Now I'll show you how the plugin works and share some examples of how it sounds. Alright guys, so I've got the Presser plugin loaded here in FL Studio, and I'll just quickly run through the different parameters and how it works before showing you some examples of how it sounds. So in the top left, we've got our bypass button, our power button that turns it on and off. And also what's cool is that you can A-B test different settings. So if you've got a sound, you're not sure which parameters sound best, you can load two different presets or create your own uh, on, diff on A and B. So, you know, we've got A here, we've got it set to there, and then B is set to here, and we can just jump back and forth. So that's one really cool feature we've got. We've got a global limiter here, um, undo and redo options and then input and output gain that you can adjust as well here or type in a value. So those are useful as well. Uh, in the presets, we've got our Aiden Kenway special presets. Uh, he's gone for a different, few different styles here, uh, some designed specifically for drums, some for mastering, and some for more character settings like aggressive compression, heavy, etc. cetera. Um, we've also got our factory presets, which are pretty awesome. Um, might be a little biased because I made them, but uh, all set up for different uh, types of instruments and settings as well as side chaining, which I'll get into later. Um, coming down here, uh, we've got our pretty standard uh, compression settings. So I'm not going to go into exactly how compression works or how to use a compressor, because if you're watching this, I assume you already know. If not, there are plenty of other tutorials that will go over that. But uh, we've got our ratio setting here, which basically uh, states how much it will push down a sound once it crosses over the threshold. And then you've got your threshold setting here, which is also a standard setting, uh, standard parameter in all compressors which is at which point uh, does the compressor start to turn on when a sound crosses the sh threshold. Um, we've got our visual feedback here, which you'll see once I start playing some examples. You've got the gain reduction meter uh, for the compressor, the gain reduction meter for the limiter, your input gain, your uh, uh, side chain uh, volume, essentially the side chain gain that is coming into the plugin if you've got the side chain turned on, um, and then the output gain as well. Coming over to here, again, more standard uh, compression parameters. Uh, your attack, which is how quickly it will react to a sound going over the threshold. Your release, which is how quickly it will react to a sound going from above the threshold back under it, like how quickly it will go back to normal, uh, no compression. And then your makeup gain to adjust for any changes in gain caused by the compression. And then your mix, so you can do parallel compression uh, or any level of compression other than 100%, or go to zero to hear how it sounds without any compression. Uh, now down here is where the plugin gets really interesting. So the glue option basically goes from a uh, peak transient limiter, a fast peak limiter, uh, which will act really quickly upon uh, the transients and squash those, uh, and a glue compressor, which is a little bit more subtle, um, more often used in like buses and that kind of thing. Uh, so you can kind of mix between those, which is pretty unique here. Um, you've also got punch, which uses a dynamic EQ essentially to uh, add some punch to your transients. Um, so that's something you can adjust accordingly if you'd like your sound to be a little bit punchier. And then the heat adds both pre and post compression saturation uh, to add some warmth and heat to your track. Um, so all of these can be used in a way to really thicken your sound uh, and get it sounding warm. Um, over in the detector section, this is where we have our side chaining. So you can route a sound into the plugin, um, turn on side chaining, and uh, it can be used as a typical side chaining compressor, um, or you can do parallel compression, um, anything in between as well. Um, the high pass will high pass the detected signal uh, for the side chain. So like if you've got a, a kick with a long bassy tail, you can have it just uh, 
detect the higher frequencies so that it only bases the side chaining on that attack rather than the entire tail of the kick. Um, it's up to you. And then channel link is also pretty unique in that uh, it allows the compressor to react um, to the channels either all as one, so left and right, it doesn't make a difference, or it can separate the channels and adjust the reaction of the compressor accordingly. Um, that's one of those things that you can just kind of play around with and see what ends up sounding best for your particular sound. Um, you know, use your ears, it sounds pretty uh, clear. So moving right along, I will get into some examples um, because that is the best way to know what we're talking about here. What's great about this plugin is it can be really used for any type of sound and uh, you can dial it into, you know, really be useful on anything. So this first sound that I've got here, uh, let me load that presser, um, is just a typical drum loop. Um, let's hear how that sounds without presser. All right, and then I've got our punchy drum bus Pre, uh, preset on. So let's hear how that sounds. So yeah, that's sounding pretty good. Uh, it does change the character a little bit, add some punch. You can decide whether it fits your mix better or worse. Um, but basically, one piece of advice that I have is that with any compressor plugin, um, it's important that you make sure you're adjusting the threshold accordingly when you add a preset on. Um, sometimes you might get lucky and it doesn't need it, but most of the time, you know, the sound that the person designing the preset was using is different, might have different dynamic range, might have different volume. So, you know, even if it's for a punchy drum bus, their drums might have been at a different level. So, you know, it's important to adjust that um, accordingly so that it really fits your sound. But uh, otherwise, these presets are, are really helpful. So, just a quick tip for you with any preset, with any compressor preset, really. Um, so now moving on to the next one, let's have a listen here. So this one is a like a bass pluck melody, I believe, if I remember correctly. So this is without presser. So it's pretty cool, but I thought maybe it could use a little bit more grit, a little bit thicker and heavier sounding. So I added uh, Aiden's Heavy 3 Grit preset. So let's hear how that sounds. So yeah, I can hear that heat really making a difference and it's really crushed there. So it's sounding really cool. I think that's a fun one. Um, all right, moving on. So this is more of like an actual mix of a song. And so what I did was I put one of Aiden's mastering presets on it. So let's hear it without that. And let's hear it with it. So as you can see, it's only doing one to two decibels of gain reduction. That's what we want with mastering. You're not at this stage. I mean, yeah, you're going to add limiting at the as the last step. But as far as compression, you don't want to be doing anything too crazy because that should have kind of been done in your mix anyway. Um, what happens here is I can really hear the low and low mids kind of push up and thicken a bit. And the song just sounds a little bit thicker and glued together. So um, I like the way that it worked here. It's very subtle, but I do think it made a difference. Let's just listen again without it and then with it. All right, cool. On to the next example. So as I said, you can use this for all kinds of sounds. So let's try it on a vocal. So this is it without anything on it. What we had and underneath it, who we fool and so deceiving now. Okay, and now let's put on our punchy EDM vocals preset. What we had and underneath it, who we fool and so deceiving now. 
So yeah, it's way punchier, way more in your face. Of course, I would still want to add reverb and some EQ and some other things to it. But as far as the compression side, I think that made a huge difference. What we had in underneath it, who we fool in, so deceiving now. So here I believe we have a pad sound. And so I just kind of used a more creative setting here um, just to kind of hear how it sounds. So this is without it. So I threw on this wall of sound preset, which kind of just pushes it really hard. Um, you know, it, it depends what you need the sound for, but I think it sounds cool. All right, and then finally, I wanted to use some examples of side chaining. So here I've got this kick track, just a four on the floor kick, and this kind of bass pad sound here. Um, and the kick is side chained to the bass pad. And uh, I'm gonna do it without anything on it for now. All right, so just standard synth bass pad with, uh, with a kick. Now let's uh, turn on our side chain ultra pump preset. So that's the most obvious one. We've got all these different sidechain presets as well. Let's hear how they sound. So I like how you can really get um, a very different character with each of the different settings and the presets. And of course you can dial it in, have it be a little bit more subtle with uh, less than 100% side chaining and affect all these different areas as well. But uh, I also really like the visual feedback of how Presser will pump along with the side chain, which is pretty cool. All right, so that's pretty much all for the Presser plugin that WA Production created in collaboration with Aiden Kenway. I hope you guys found this video helpful and that you'll go give Presser a try in your own music. Uh, but I will catch you guys next time. Peace.